Hi everyone, I haven't been in front of the camera for a while and so today I thought I'll do it, although the light is really not that great, it's actually really stormy and um, rainy and windy outside, so it's pretty grey. Uh, grey, not great. And uh, I do sound a little bit funny and that's because I'm going through like a cold of some sort. So, uh, but luckily I'm not having any cough attacks, if that's good. I'll have um, a few sips of hot coffee or tea and um, yeah, so today I want to talk about digital art, how I feel about it, what has changed uh, my opinion of it throughout the last few years. Um, also, I purchased a book and that's actually the reason why I decided to make this video just to summarize all the thoughts and bring them in one pot. Now who's this video going to be uh, possibly useful for? I assume someone who is into digital art, someone who's curious about it, someone who uh, is thinking whether they should try it out, maybe, maybe you like it, uh, when you see other people do. There's a lot of digital art illustrators on YouTube. A couple of them I'm watching myself. I actually haven't watched for a while, but I used to. And um, yeah, they kept pulling out their iPads and uh, doing all the Procreate fun things and it just looked so easy. Um, but uh, here is the thing. I used to feel quite apprehensive about digital art. When you think about the the start of digital art, it all was very kind of 90s, like 90s fashion, very confused. Um, it just, you know, it was blobs of something. It was quite unattractive for myself, for my style. And, and hopefully if you have been watching my videos, then you sort of know what my style is. So yeah, I really was kind of not into it at all. And, um, I didn't find anything about digital art to be uh, interesting or beautiful or intriguing. And um, so that kind of one went on a back burner. But what made me come back to being interested and curious about digital art and actually look into it a little bit is the fact that everything seems to be you know, going towards that direction. So the cameras on the phones get improved every year. The the fact that we can take such a good quality picture on the phone um, compared to a big camera that we need to, you know, obviously it's still going to be much better if you have a DSLR camera or something like that, but it's just the, the quality of things are improving. And, um, and so... I kind of started really finding it quite um, inspiring when people use Procreate to create art because as a matter of fact now on Procreate you can create so many things and I got um, a pro iPad whatever these are called I'm not that great of a <laughs> technologically advanced person so yeah it's it's a black black color and whatever it is but um i have the latest version of the pencil just because i wanted to so let me backtrack a little bit um all of this started actually out of need rather than, oh, I'm curious and I want to try it out. I mean, it's quite expensive to go and buy iPad Pro. And so, you know, you just don't do it on a whim. You know, you need to kind of really invest into it um, and, and really be sure that that's something you're going to be using and that's something you need. But I'll come to that in a minute. So I'm just checking what time it is already. Um, so... When I opened my Etsy shop, or before I opened my Etsy shop, because I had to put products in. So when I started designing my products, one of them, which is the clear stamps, um, I very quickly realized that, okay, fine, I found the manufacturer that does superb quality of clear stamps, and I designed all of that myself, and it was such a beautifully interesting and creative project that I really enjoyed all of that but when it came to designing the insert which is what this little 
uh, packaging is called so this paper which has a front and the back that was just so painful I can't even explain to you so first of all uh, at that time I didn't have the um, iPad Pro and so I kind of tried to do a few things of my um, MacBook Pro and I quickly realized I had to have some sort of uh, photoshops that cost a ton of money to be able to do the simplest things and I tried to search the net and find different apps and like to use something on my phone and all sorts of websites that offer you a service similar to what I needed none of it was the quality that I needed so um, I then had to ask the company actually whether they could you know I would just send them for example the logo and um, could they sort of and, and the text and the font everything I would send it as a file and could they just please put it there in there and um, same thing here so and and you would think that is really simple task but when you are working with someone um, I don't know it just becomes a completely different experience so for example um, I was telling them you know what margins I wanted etc but when you're designing it yourself you can actually move it quickly on the screen and realize that it would look much better if you moved the logo slightly to this side rather than emailing each other can you please change this and can you please change that it just becomes a lot easier also there were loads of little mistakes that were made over and over again and I'm not having a go at the person that did it but it's just um, it was to me really kind of surprising how much time it took to do such a simple job compared to actually me creating uh, these beautiful you know um, images which is what you would think that would take longer but in actual fact the insert took longer now that was one of the major issues that really caused me a lot of headache and a lot of wasting of my time but the other problem huge problem was my logo so when I um, started thinking of my logo before opening my um, brand my company I thought I had a fairly a straight idea I actually even done a watercolor swatch myself and I kind of knew how I wanted it to look otherwise and so I went um, online and I started looking for um, a graphic designer who could help me out and I came across this website called Fiverr or Fever. I'll put it here in the um, down below here so you can read the the spelling the exact website but yeah I think it's pronounced either Fever or Fiverr anyway um, it seems to be a uh, kind of famous uh, or, or known place to go and find and hire a graphic designer. Now that was my first experience and it was really strange because I thought if I'm paying a few hundred pounds I'm going to get a good product because a few hundred pounds can buy you a good lens for a camera, it can be you know one third of a camera so it is quite a chunk of money to pay to a person that you never meet to discuss it in person you don't have any phone conversations you only email and then sometimes that person could be from another country uh, another continent and then the the times could be that your daytime is their nighttime and, and, and their uh, daytime is your night time. So when you're writing emails, it'd be like day or two before you get into any contact. So, yeah, I, I kind of didn't sort of think that it would be so uh, difficult as it was. Maybe that was just my experience. But uh, this is something that I want uh, to share with you because I think if you are someone who's uh, thinking of starting your own business you need to think of things like branding and logos and and sometimes you think oh I can do it myself but if you want it to look good you either need to pay someone to do it for you or you need to buy the right equipment so when I was um, 
<clears throat> working with this girl and I picked her because um, she put such a lovely um, summary of her, her all of the projects that she did apparently for some fashion magazines this and that and it all sounded like she knew what she did and I looked through her previous work and it looked good so I thought yes that sounds good so when we started working there were a lot of little mistakes a lot of things that weren't paid attention to um and the other thing is the system uh, on fiverr fever is that you have to or you can pay for a number of revisions i think when you pay for the package you can get like a one revision included and then if you want extras because let's face it who's going to get it right on the first um, or second attempt then you have to pay extra so I paid quite a bit of money to cover everything and in the end I will tell you what the result was which I thought it was just where do you go it's not like you can ask for for your money back or for refund because someone hasn't um, done their job you know so it's nothing you just pay the money goes and you see never again and that person really after a while even if you kind of message them later to say look this is actually not working or you know this needs to be redone that's it you know your time has expired it's been kind of accepted and that's it so the project is finished and that is it so um i would recommend this is my honest opinion that if you do want to um have a professional looking logo it is much better to um, save up and buy something like this which will last you years and years you can also use it not just for your business but for private reasons as well when you're traveling you can take it with you on the airplane you can watch movies on it you can do all sorts of things so at the moment i'm not using it for anything else other than for um digital art and working with procreate i kind of you know um pretty much that's everything i do on the um ipad pro okay so just coming back just to make you understand about this logo so um i sent this is my actually my own watercolor uh, swatch that i did so i scanned it on a really high quality super high dpi whatever it's called um you know a resolution scanner and i send it to the girl or to the graphic designer and um, asked her look i want a scripty kind of name across i want a circle and a different font in creates and so it was very simple like it was just really simple minimal work for her i also explained that i was quite new to it that i you know i'm doing it for the first time and i was asking questions around how things would work di digitally etc etc i also said what i needed it for i.e i need this to be printed eventually and i also bought it as a pack um like a digital um i forgot what it's called but it was a whole pack that you buy so um you get it also for like a facebook icon and instagram icon and you get business cards and it's just a few different things there so you buy like a not only the the logo but also the signature so a couple of things and um so yeah in fact you see here for instance so this is the signature that comes in the pack when when they design the logo so basically uh it was very very straightforward what i felt and like i said there were a few mistakes here and there which i had to go back to please can you change this can you move this up and change this da, da, da. and as this continued i noticed that the quality of the logo towards the end was sort of deteriorating so the fact that i scanned and sent a very high resolution swatch it started becoming pixelated it started uh the circle would be cut off and pixelated in some areas and i was really confused by the whole thing but anyway so i guess that's the quality of the designer and again whatever they're advertising about their work and who they worked for 
means very little once you start working with them because as a matter of fact you know they could take 10 projects like yours they could be working on all sorts they don't have they don't feel the responsibility that someone can you know knock on the door and say look you know, I'm bringing this back because this is not what I paid for. I want my money back. And having that security on their side, that's what happens. So, um, yeah, so basically I had to waste a lot of time asking for a lot of changes and a lot of corrections. In the end, we got there, but the actual problem came when I started using this um, logo design uh, for... Or with my manufacturers for printing the inserts um, as well as um, I created stickers with that so basically I approached so many sticker companies that told me the same thing that the um, I forgot what what the exact name is but basically because I have scanned my swatch um, of the watercolor and send it to her there is then limitation um, for the printing companies to print it in that exact color, even though it is the best resolution you can possibly scan, they cannot print it because it is not digitally created. So when, when a watercolor swatch is created digitally, it means that's the color that will be printed as far as I was explained. So, um, Basically, it was a lot of disappointment because I realized the whatever few hundred pounds that I paid have been flushed down the toilet, quite frankly, because <clears throat> stickers I couldn't create. I had to then um, literally companies were saying to me, no, I'm sorry, we cannot work with this file. And she sent me different files um, and none of them they could work with. And so... I was just thinking, why on earth did she not? She should have had that information as a graphic designer and tell me that because I was saying to her, it's so important for me to have it really bright and colorful and as close to the original as possible that I don't have, I was going to show you the original swatch. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I, I was saying it is, it's, it's so important to have it like that. And then she actually also in, in, enhanced the colors digitally to bring them, to create them more brighter. But that still somehow didn't work for the printing company. So a lot of printing companies or the, the um, sticker companies had to say no to it. So they couldn't work with those files at all. And um, I found one in the end which um, tried as best as they could to pull up the colors and do their own kind of photoshopping, which is not their job at all. But they did fantastic job with what with what they had to work with. Um, and then when I was working with the manufacturers here, oh my gosh, I couldn't understand in the beginning. I thought there was something wrong with their printers because they would print out the logo that that the graphic designer designed as it was and it looked completely gray and dull and I thought what is going on here and it took me a while to understand because then I started approaching the sticker companies afterwards and then they told me what the problem was so yes um again you know this is what it is and Basically, after a while, I'm I'm a perfectionist and I just cannot work with people that do half-hearted jobs. And this is why I run my own company, my own business, is because I know that if I have to finish something, I will sit until two o'clock in the morning and I will get it done. And no matter how exhausted and tired I will be next day, but I want it to be perfect. And, you know... So to me, that's who I am and that's the expectations I have when I pay a good sum of money to someone. But, you know, obviously not everyone has the same work ethic. Um, and so after a while, I realized even after this that I need to get the um, iPad Pro and be able to design everything myself. So I used the the logo for the products because I had to you know create them and so 
it would have it, it already delayed quite a lot of my work but I had to get it out so um, for the future I decided I'm going to redesign the whole thing myself <laughs> and now looking at it thinking god if I had that knowledge and this is why I want to pass it on to you if I had that knowledge I would just much rather save up throughout the year however long it would have taken me to save up and not pay below this you know a few hundred pounds of money to someone who has created such a terrible job that in fact I won't be using it you know it's just it's gone it's gone and the whole experience has been not great so there I am with my um, iPad Pro and I just want to show you a couple of things and so <clears throat> here for it for instance I don't know Um, so hopefully you could see that as clear as I can see it here on the screen. So this is just a example of what you can do. Other thing you can do, which is actually really, really fun, and I'll try to see if I can find it. So there is um, an option here which you can create something. I hope it shows it beautifully. So basically this looks very much like alcohol inks. So you can create um, this art straight digitally. You don't need to scan anything and you can just play around. You can do so many different things and it's actually really easy to pick up. I am not someone who is great at these things, but I make myself learn it because I realized that in long term, I am saving money by not paying it to someone who is not willing to do a great job. Do you see what I mean? And so therefore, I feel like I have invested into something that I don't need to rely on anyone. I don't need to wait for their emails. I don't need to keep on saying, can you move it this way and half a centimeter up and change that. I can do it all myself. And that gives me that sort of, you know, drive to do it. And actually last night I sat down and I had to redesign the packaging because, um, like I said, it had to go out last time and it was what it, what it was. It was still good. It was good, but not as good as I'd like it to be. So that that is the, the perfectionist in me. And so therefore I'm redesigning it and freshening it up for my new stamps that are coming um, out soon. They're not made yet. So it's just, I'm working on the whole thing. And um, so that's that. Now, let me just come back to this book. Um, I, I purchased this book on Jackson's and I tried to find if I could see anything about this book on YouTube. It's called Digital Art Revolution and it has a beautiful, it's called Creating Fine Art with Photoshop and it's by Scott Ligon. It's got this beautiful um, illustration right here. Okay, so it kind of really caught my eye because I'm keen to learn and how to do things uh, digitally and so yes so I went ahead and I tried to find this book on Amazon because books are usually a bit cheaper there I couldn't find it at all um, and then this book was quite pricey it was about 20 pounds something over I think over 20 pounds and it had only I think few copies like two or three copies left so I thought okay um, it's unfortunate I couldn't find the year, the, the publishing year when it was published. So I kind of had to, sometimes when you don't see books before, when you actually don't have any pictures to look inside the book, it's really a risk to purchase because it could be something very good, it could be something quite terrible. And for the price that I was paying, I thought it would be a good one. But anyways, the cover is completely misleading because there is none of this beautiful art inside. In fact, it feels like um, a family 
pictures, like, you know, someone who's, like, self-published and makes their family and friends go outside, takes some rubbish pictures of them <laughs> and uses them for the book, for example. And it's just so uninspiring, just to give you an idea how bad the whole thing is. Uh, there are some worse ones. Check this out. Um, yeah, so it goes through like that. Now, as I got this book, I realized it's 10 years old and what's that going to be? How useful is that going to be now with everything that has come out afterwards? And now having something like Procreate, this is looking at like Stone Age. So again, if I could save you some money, I would not recommend this book, unfortunately. Um, again, look at the pictures here. They're very low quality and blurry. And unfortunately, all the pictures, look at these pictures, they're like straight out of 90s, bad, bad pictures. Um, yeah, so it's just horrendous, really. I don't know what possessed the publisher to use this picture um, to put on the cover because there is nothing like that inside. Uh, there is some art pictures at the back uh, but only a couple so mostly it's just really confused it's badly done and it's really uninspiring in so many ways that I can't even explain to you so, yes, I mean, I don't know what to do with it, <laughs> to be honest. And, um, oh my gosh, look at these pictures. Have I shown these? I'll show you again. Yeah, so that's it. Um, if I could say one thing is don't, or oh, this is what I learned. I learned not to trust um, other people with digital art. So if you can't, I mean, I had this one occasion where I bought a book on Amazon and it had very little. So this book on Amazon, it had very few pictures inside. So it was very difficult to judge by the cover again, how it's going to be inside, but it ended up being fantastic. But in other cases, when um, a shop doesn't put a single picture of the book inside, I would recommend not to risk it because um, it might be what you have here. So yeah, if you can, try to save up for something and teach yourself. Um, there's loads of, in uh, loads of tutorials on YouTube now which are free uh, for Procreate and in fact if you purchase it at an Apple store you can book um, I don't know if maybe if even if you purchase it online you probably still can book an appointment at Apple store where they will go and do like a tutorial for you there um, or demonstration with other people so they book slots and you can book yourself in and go and see how you can use it you can ask questions there there will be uh, an expert there that will show you how to use procreate and i haven't done it myself yet purely because i had no time i was going to book it but to be honest with you i have learned quite a bit picked it up myself if i had to find out how to do something i would kind of google it and find it very quickly on youtube as well so I can only recommend to trust yourself and uh, teach yourself how to do things. And I don't know, I, I, I would personally not want to hire another graphic designer unless it's like a firm where I can walk in and sit next to the person, see exactly what they're doing on a screen and, you know, not leave until I'm happy with, with what they have done. I would not trust... Uh, an online digital uh, or graphic designer again. So I hope this was somewhat useful. I really try to um, 
share my experiences and if I feel something is not great quality or we could spend our money elsewhere better for our own good then I will share it with you as well because you know at the end of the day these people get paid they pay their bills you take the money you give it to them and at the end of the day they haven't given you back anything all right so that is it there are a couple of things that i also ordered along with the book on um, jackson's and i think i might do like a uh, review and just to let you know what they are is the graphic oh, sorry the graphic <laughs> um, the Karen Dash Technalo set and it's the water soluble graphite pencils I had my eye on these for a while and they're quite pricey they're about 20 quid for you know for a few pencils it's a bit pricey but they are uh, beautiful and so it's the six colors they're colored and well, three of them are colored red, green and blue and the others are just um, kind of like a regular graphite but B, 3B and 6B. So I have the 3B and I love it. I use it so much. It's actually becoming shorter and shorter now. There's this little guy here and um, yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.